Hey guys, Bike here, and I'm back again with another Last Epoch build guide video. This one's going to be for the Smite and Ignite Hammerden build. So if you saw my last one, uh, the last build guide I uploaded, that one we called Void Storm. <laughs> and basically we're a Void Knight, we got hammers, we got Smite, and we got Time Rot, Doom, all that good stuff. This one is where I, we're a paladin, we're a hammered in, if you will, if you will. And we got hammers, we got smite, and this time we got ignite. And that's mainly our own only source of dot. We took it in a little bit different direction. Uh, I went more crit than I did dot, but we still got, you know, some dot influence there. And we pushed this one to over 700 corruption. That's right. I mean, it was 701, but nonetheless, we broke the 700 barrier on a life base build that I've been playing for like a week. Now, of course, I already had a bunch of gear in my stash that I could, you know, fall back on. Nonetheless, I think you guys are going to like the results. So anyway, if you're just here for the planner, there's a planner right in the description. Feel free. Go click that and be on your merry way. There will be timestamps. So if you guys kind of curious about something i'm going to kind of go over everything and explain my thought process so if you want to see that you know go to the gear the passives all that good stuff if you don't mind leave a like possibly subscribe if you like what i do here but anyway let's go ahead jump into the game see you soon all right guys here we are in game i'm gonna have some gameplay uh playing above so as stated in the intro this was taken at 701 corruption we're able to run around. The hammers follow us. Unlike the void storm, they don't stay behind. They come with us. They have a pretty decent chance to be proc and smite uh, with all the ignite chance we get on smite with all the ignite chance. We already got on our gear with all the ignite chance we get from soul fire. We're proc and ignite like crazy. And on top of that, we're proccing a ton of smites. They're burning everything down and we're able to just run through. If there's a tough enemy, we throw down javelin. We spam some more or we use javelin to get around the map a little bit faster with lunge it's very useful for just kind of speeding through killing stuff running a tough enemy bam you do what i just said before or if you get to one of those you know those echoes where you got to defend the shrine defend the beacon that sort of thing you can throw a javelin down the radius is pretty large it can almost cover the entire area you got to defend and then you just go to town with hammers man you just rain those hammers down you're gonna be like thor 2.0 except instead of thunder and lightning you got fire and brimstone bro they're going nuts they're just going around you fire everywhere it's awesome all right and here we got rage at 701 corruption as well he can be a little bit tricky you know with hammers uh, most of them hit he's a bigger target but um what you got to do a lot is run around and try and dodge his stuff and that's why having the the hammers falling you could help or or not depending on your point of view and uh javelin is super useful when fighting against this guy because he doesn't really have too many ads it's hard to proc the free sigils you know the six percent chance when you kill an enemy so you throw a javelin down and you just go to town as crazy as you can and then you got to run around and try and dodge all this stuff but nonetheless it's pretty satisfying seeing three four maybe even 500 stacks of ignite on this dude just burning them down along with all the smite all the crits all that fun stuff so anyway let's jump into the game and go over the gear all right guys here we are in game so we're gonna go over the gear the idols the blessings the skill trees passive tree all that good stuff starting with the gear so one reason why i went crit over pure dot is this one made it easy this is a double tier seven i got spell critical strike chance it had crit chance and i sealed it at tier two i added fire damage because that not only helps the smites that are dealing fire damage but also the ignites otherwise you can go for spell damage spell damage is fine too but you lose that little extra damage that you can be applying to your ignites t7 20 percent fire pin this thing is nuts and then a chance to ignite on hit this is a circle of fortune find so i actually found two of them team circle of fortune fam right over here represent <laughs> and uh yeah the main thing you're gonna want is spell critical strike chance if you can get any of these other modifiers gravy but this for me yeah yeah 
Moving on to the chest plate, uh, we're using Champion Regalia. It's got so many benefits, guys. 700 armor, 10% of armor mitigation also applies to damage over time. You know, normally armor doesn't apply to dots, but when you have something like this on, like most of the Sentinel in-game builds out there, they're probably using Champion Regalia. Now there's probably a few, you know, niche cases, Titan Heart, something, something else. Champion Regalia is pretty much king. That's why they call it champion. <laughs> so what you're going to be looking for is increase health. That's your main priority. And then if you can get some health on there, some flat health, as you can see, that's what I prioritize here. Got the T seven increased health added flat health. And then I sealed the elemental resistance. After that, I then started to add my attunement and my increased fire and ignite duration. I ran out of forging potential. I would prefer T5 attunement, T5 increased firing night duration. And there you go. Leonines is probably best in slight uh, here as well. Not only do we get the reduced bonus damage taken from crits, we get the 550 armor. This one is another one where I prioritize the health. And then I started adding some other stuff. We already had a T5 vitality on here. Vitality is fine. I'd prefer attunement in this case. Uh, I was able to get the T5 increased fire damage and ignite duration. That's a big, huge W right there. I sealed the attunement because the vitality was already maxed. So I can add that T5 fire damage and ignite duration. And then the endurance threshold, that was a yellow. That was a glyph of chaos. I was trying to get flat health. We got endurance threshold. Not bad. Endurance threshold helps. This is a life build. Okay. Bleeding heart. This one we got a t7 on there a nearly max t7 and then i probably prefer fire damage or maybe chance to apply frailty but we got elemental damage that is perfectly fine fire is an element the reason why i use bleeding heart is it gives us a massive source of leech that way we will go over this in the blessings but that way we don't have to take the spell blessing you, you know you know the one from the black sun where you can leech spell damage this one is just any form of damage right that one would only apply to when i'm procking smite this one applies to all forms of damage we're gonna leech from the ignite we're gonna leech from the hammer throw we're gonna leech from the the smites did i already say smite who knows you you leech it all and the main drawback to bleeding heart normally is when you cast a spell, you're inflicted with bleed. Well, we're not casting smite. The hammers are casting smite. So technically we got bleeding hammers. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, we don't have to worry about that. So we can just leech to our heart's content. Your, your normal hammered in build that that's doing smite is going to probably run devotion and the reason why is they're also stacking a frick ton of mana since we're not stacking a frick ton of mana i say forget it forget the little extra damage we get from that let's go for the leech and i think this is why this has allowed us to push as far as we have and there's still room to push i don't know how much further i don't know if we can break 800 on this but the the leech is massive uh, this, the, the leech goes all the way up to 9%. I got a 7.6%. I consider that a W bleeding heart. Ever since they made the change, I, I found like two, two LP bleeding hearts, maybe three. And I was able to get these rolls on it. I, I consider that a W obviously for the throwing attack speed on the implicit. I'd prefer that 15%, but I'm going to take what I can get. Right. <sighs> Okay, so this this would, is not necessarily the best. I needed the all res. You would probably want a T7 24% chance to block. If I had that, I would push more for sigils instead of javelin. That way I can get my block chance nearly maxed. But since I need the all res, this is the only shield I had that had block chance, already a good implicit block chance, block effectiveness. I'm just sticking with this. and I'm just living with my 65% chance to block. But if block chance and having a high block chance is important to you, then maybe drop the javelin, pick up sigils, spec into, I know this is, we're, we're kind of going to the skill section. Spec into this 
and then have a nearly max block chance. That could be one area that I might eventually have to go. Like if I want to push into a thousand corruption, but the way it's set up right now, I think this is pretty good. So I'm going to take that and move on. Nonetheless, if you're able to take care of your resistances elsewhere and you don't need the all res or, or if you're able to get a shield like this with health, with all res, with a high block chance, with good block effectiveness, then go for it. This is a weaker part of the build, I understand. Uh, okay, for the reins, this one I have, uh, I have thrown attack speed. Personally, you could go for whatever. You, you could use the ruby reins if you want. Uh, let's just look up ruby ring. Uh, I have a whole section called brains is this base right here. You can go not necessarily these rolls, but this base they had, they give you fire resistance and they give you increased fire damage. Well, the thing is I, I, I got this, but I don't have any of the, uh, any of these with these kind of rolls that I was able to get onto it. So this isn't required, but the plus two to all attributes is nice. And the increased cooldown recovery is nice. So use whatever kind of ring you want. You can go for gold rings, whatever. I personally prioritize the throwing attack speed. Now, if you have a T7 throwing attack speed and you have the ability to, you could seal the throwing damage and seal that, that mana cost and then put like critical strike. You could do strength, but critical strike might might be a little bit better. Stun avoidance, it's whatever. I mean, it's whatever. Health is the bigger one. You can literally put whatever you want in the stun avoidance. It could be another. Um, it could be a resistance. It, it, endurance, endurance threshold, anything. This one, I don't really need this one as much anymore. I could probably, if I had enough forging potential, I would have probably rune of creation this and just had a copy of this, but th there's a couple of roles I need on here. I needed the endurance. I needed the health. I would prefer a T seven attack speed over the throwing damage minus four mana cost, but this is perfectly fine. I could in theory copy this one, but I want to try and get as much as throwing attack speed as possible. So that's what we got. This is a, a good old fashioned T6. Needed the endurance and yeah, go from there. The health, the the belt, uh, I call it the health, the belt, th th this belt might as well be called the health. Like, like, let's look at this. I know my, my, my camera is kind of blocking the health bar, but let's take off this belt. Do you see that? You see that chat? I know this is a YouTube video, but I'm going to call you guys chat anyway. That is over 700 health. Okay. Yeah. A little over 700 health that we lost. If we don't have this belt. I'm calling this belt the health. <laughs> this belt is perfect. Literally perfect. Uh, I got a T5 fire damage max. I got one. Uh, well, I guess it's not literally perfect. I guess what you could do is you could seal the uh if i didn't need to seal the the poison resistance you could seal the the cleanse and then put on whatever you want could be anything could be damage over time elemental damage over time anything in this case i had to seal the poison resistance so go ahead you you're gonna want cleanse because those dots even with all the mitigation we got get pretty hardcore uh you're going to want cleanse, fire damage. I got a, a T7 hybrid health on this BZ. <laughs> this is nuts. And then I was able to get a max increased percentage health. And I actually do need the poison resistance. So got to seal that. Boots got a T7 movement speed. Uh, we were able to get a T5 attunement, T5 hybrid health, T5 flat health. Uh, the dodge rating, we do not need that. I wish I could have sealed something else. But this is what we got. The Citadel boots, they're a great line able to get a lot of armor out of it excellent uh for the gauntlets you have a couple options here if you're able to get yourself like a three four lp burning avarice the best i ever found was two this would probably be best in slot 
and you would want to try and get uh, attunement, throwing attack speed, health, hybrid health. I prioritize the throwing attack speed. I got a T6. I prefer T7. But this would give you even more leech, leech rate, elemental resistance, and fire pin with ignite. So if you can get a really nicely rolled burning avarice, this would be best in slot. But Eternal Gauntlets are a great base because they give you a lot of armor. And again, they give you that armor mitigation also applies to damage over time. Great. Uh, if you're good with the crafting and you know how to work the, um, the Glyphs of Insight, you could add even more armor mitigation also applies to damage over time. I didn't bother with that. This is what we got. Uh, I guess for the boots, the reason why I got these here, I wanted to showcase this. If you could get a nicely rolled fiery dragon shoes, right? And you can get like movement speed. In this case, I wouldn't even worry about movement speed because it already has implicit movement speed and then movement speed as a stat. If you're able to get health on there, like I was able to get on here, I would go for that. I would definitely go for that. But uh, if you're able to get like a four LP fiery dragon shoes, use that. Use it immediately. The, the fire pen with ignite chef's kiss increase fire damage the reduced bonus damage taken from critical strikes you use this and leonines boom you're off to the races or you can use this and then maybe use something like this right if you're able to get this kind of roll but at that point you're gonna be losing a lot of health this is a t7 increased fire damage and ignite duration right this is what i was using before but as you can see, we lost a lot of health. We lost like around 500 health. I'm prioritizing health here over what we got, over the damage. The higher you push, the more you're going to want health. Or if you're just really good at the game. <laughs> so yeah, you could, if you're using Fiery Dragon Shoes, 84% reduced bonus damage taken. Okay, you take 16% more damage from a crit. That could still leave you the option to use another helmet that's not Leonines if you're able to get this kind of roll. I personally like using Leonines and Citadels. If I had Fiery Dragon Shoes with health, I might consider using that. Or use this in conjunction with Leonines and bam, you're off to the races. And then Soul Fire. So... <laughs> I had this really nice relic that also had critical strike multiplier plus four to smite health. I needed the endurance. So I slammed it. I was able to get these. I was ecstatic. I was over the moon. The very next day, I drop a, a four LP soul fire <laughs> with better rolls. I'm like, oh my gosh, are you serious? So I don't know. I would say soul fire is probably best in slot here because it gives you a huge chance to ignite on fire skill hit, which would be our smites. Uh, but there's a couple of different options from the same dungeon. Oh, by the way, I didn't say it burning avarice. You only get from the, uh, the soul fire bastion. You get it specifically from the vendor, not the boss, the vendor. You got it. Every time you complete a soul fire, you go to the vendor and you buy all the gloves and you hope to God you get one of these. Same thing with the ashes of Orkirian. You get crit chance. You get chance to stun with physical and fire. Our hammers, hammers are physical. Increased cast speed. We don't need it. Health regen. It's nice. Uh, the increased physical and fire damage. Also really nice. If you can get a really nice one. And you don't care about the ignite chance and the percent more damage to ignited enemies. The ashes of a Kyrian might be a better role for you, but I would only do this if I can get a three LP or higher. The best I've ever found is two, but this is also a really good choice. Plus they give, they have base attunement and all res could be a good choice. Anyway, that is the gear. Okay, moving on to the idols. We're not going to spend a ton of time here. We're using these keen adored idols. They have a chance to smite and then chance to shred armor. Um, preferably, you'd want a 9% chance to smite, 76% chance to shred armor with throwing attack. I, I don't have one of those perfectly rolled. This is what I have. And then this one... 
I, I don't really have a good idol to log. I, I have a few more of these idols, but it had a 9% chance to shred, uh, to cast Smite and then a 75 health. I took it. You don't necessarily need it. You can put something else in there, but 75 flat health can go a long way, especially with all our percentages to increase health. We take this off. That was actually a lot more health than 75. So you don't necessarily need to use it, but this was just such a great rolled idol. If you have one of these, maybe throw it on there. Uh, I guess you could also use no, never mind. I was going to say you could also use uh, the throne of ambition. I would probably go with chance to cast smite. Who knows? I can give it a try. You can give it a try. See if that jives with you. And then for our little idols, we only put in, uh, we put in what we needed for the resistances to make sure our resistances were capped. All right, moving on to the blessings. I'm actually going to go to the map here. Uh, all right, we'll be quick with this one. Follow the outcast. This one, literally put whatever you want there. I put unique drop chance. Uh, stolen lance, literally put whatever you want there. I chose raindrop rate. Uh here you can put whatever you want i chose scepter i mean you could also choose wands if you want uh follow the empire uh wand shard drop rate that's a good one but you can literally choose you can choose prefix it, it, it's it's up to you on whatever you're looking for they don't they don't really impact the game other than drop rates now this side of the tree however i chose chance to ignite i got a good roll uh other ones you can choose is uh leech spell leech you can go for that or you could also go for critical critical strike multiplier i wanted extra chance to ignite but you know whatever suits your fancy if you you're not as worried about the dots and you just want to do as much damage as possible like on its face or you want a little bit more survivability you go with those other two options I chose ignite ending the storm. Um, the only reason why I haven't changed this is I got literally the perfect chance to shred lightning resistance on hit when I was playing hammered in uh, smite hammered in. I've never found a perfect chance to shred on anything like up here where we get the chance to shred fire resistance. I haven't gotten it. I got a 41%. I couldn't bring myself to say goodbye to this. Now, obviously, in the new patch that's coming out, Cycle 2, we're going to have more options. We're going to be able to save this. Me, personally, there's not a lot here in this timeline that really impact the game, so I kept it sentimental. I know what you could do is drop this, take mana, take lightning resistance, take um, uh, health regen, the new health, the, 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 the hybrid health regen affects. You can go for any of those. Don't go for chance to shred lightning resistance on hit. It does nothing for us. Reign of dragons. Since our, um, critical strike damage is taken care of by Leonines and Citadel boots, all res, all res is a great choice here. I would definitely go for all res, uh, increased armor. We got a nearly max one over here. Uh, percentage armor i would definitely go for that and then for the last ruin i hate this timeline so i went for class specific shard drop rates there we go that's the end that is the blessings all right jumping into the skills so we have holy aura the re holy aura might actually be one that you could potentially drop and add sigils over but honestly i needed the elemental resistance and endurance and i needed the poison resistance from there i was able to pick up fire pen penetration ignite chance cast speed we don't need the physical damage but we need to take that to get to uh get to this expedite increase throwing attack speed chance to haste on hit other than that you know holy or is just a really nice quality of life i use it in pretty much all of my paladin builds because i can dump so many of what i would have to put on gear onto a skill i think that's amazing uh you have a couple of choices here this is how i set it up if you're able to take care of this stuff and you still want to use holy aura what i would do is uh max out uh i don't know if i'd max out raya's devotion 
probably max out burning blows if he can increase global fire damage per point uh you could also go for crit chance crit multiplier that sort of thing but i needed these two spots to fill out my defenses okay for the hammers i put five points in rapid throw i only put one point in guardian zeal and then i put three points to get more ignite chance mostly because the wand i have has a frick ton of critical strike chance on it but if you're hurting for critical strike chance don't even take any points in raya's legacy put them all here or maybe put one point i personally wanted to try and stack up my ignite chance uh winged hammers we just put one point here to get up to here uh from here we're able to grab one point iron spiral one point in hammer vortex two points in catapults and then i put as many points as possible into ballista try and reduce the man uh mana cause a hammer throw right now hammer throw costs three because of our rings smite all right you have a couple different choices here if you're going for crit i max this out just try and get my base crit up as possible put five points in sacrifice five points on uh atonement do not take pillars of light this only works when you directly cast smite when your hammers are casting smite this chance for a double cast doesn't proc you're going to want to do two points in blinding flash gives you a chance to blind as well as a 20 percent uh hit damage it's a multiplicative damage bonus against blinded enemies from there three points and holy fire to put as many points into conflagration as possible if you're just doing the pure dot build uh i would remove that and then i'd pump up holy fire then conflagration and then focus on this i would always max these two out volatile reversal very vanilla uh one point in time loss two points in traveler's fatigue one point in sepid void riff you you really want harbinger of dust that's the one where it really increases our damage out the wazoo uh prioritize getting three points into warp time for more uh attack speed one point in time loss vitality very vanilla i use this setup for 95 percent of my sentinel builds and then javelin i'm not very skilled with javelin i don't use it a lot this is the setup i went with and i think it's fine uh if you're somebody who really understands javelin you like to tinker with it go ahead and change whatever you want but there's a couple nice bonuses i would definitely go for i would grab the battle standard i personally like the chance to be able to jump to the flag it gives me another form of traversal on top of the unspecked lunge and then uh i like coming down here making it last as long as possible put one point in divine intervention now the the flag will also cast smite for us and then we can increase that duration and increase the crit chance of smite when it's been cast by the flag all right guys that is the skills all right and let's jump into the passive tree so i put 20 points into the the first sentinel uh put eight points in juggernaut just for the resistances one point in fearless and one point in stalwart for that three percent block chance five points in armor clad it's our only source of damage reduction in the sentinel skill tree and then five points in valiant charge this helps a lot with volatile reversal giving it a 30 percent uh cooldown because volatile reversal is considered a movement skill all right i put one point in steel agus for two percent block chance just to add to it let's go over to void knight real quick i put 10 points on abyssal endurance it gives us health void resistance physical resistance all good if you don't need that much only put five points here if you're good on resistances only put the five take your volatile reversal and head over to the paladin tree i needed the resistances and then the health's a nice bonus in the paladin tree uh i did not need the elemental resistance because i was leaning on holy aura if you don't want to use holy aura and lean on that you could put eight points here i personally try to go for as much health and damage so i put eight points in conviction just to get all that pen all that extra damage one point in honor just for the block chance but you also need that to get be able to put 10 points in heaven fire for flat damage while using a shield this helps pump up the damage of our um of our smites put 10 points in valor 
for 150 health plus healing effectiveness. Uh, I didn't need the endurance from Blinding Light. Otherwise, this is a great source of endurance if you need it. But since I didn't need it, I didn't put anything there. I needed the Necrotic Resistance plus it gives us health and health resistance from Holy Icon. So I put six points. Put eight points in Sanctuary Guardian. This gives us 400 flat armor while wielding a shield. It's very powerful. As well as 16 flat spell damage with a shield. It's great. Then I put one point in shield wall to get another 5% block chance, but we can't dodge. I'm fine with that. Put one point in faith armor to get the increased armor. And then three points in prayer agus to get uh, to get more health and endurance threshold. Put 10 points in holy precision. This gives us spell crit chance, throwing crit chance, and crit multiplier with lightning skills. Obviously, we're not using lightning. That kind of stinks, but the spell crit chance and throwing crit chance, yeah. 12 points in reverence of duality. It gives us increased health, damage, healing effectiveness, and mana. And then 12 points in light of Raye for more fire damage and lightning damage and movement speed. And that's it. That's the entire build. Thank you so much for everybody who's tuned in to watch these build guide videos. Really looking forward to cycle two. If you haven't already, consider uh, subscribing to the channel. Uh, I stream here just about every day. Uh, I also stream on Twitch. All that information available in the description. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. You guys have yourselves a great one. Take care.